Even as Environment Secretary Gina Lopez dukes it out with the miner, she is turning her favor on one sector, renewable energy. Her office has promised to fast-track permits for RE projects and already some 800 are under review. One of the companies poised to benefit from this boom is Pure Energy, which is gearing up to go public this year. To talk more, let me bring in Gary Espino. He's the president of Pure Energy. Gary, welcome to the show. Good to have you. Yeah, good morning. Uh, so it's a big year for you guys. You're you know, laying the groundwork for an IPO. Uh, yes. Let's take a look at the details. We're talking about um, up to two pesos a piece, 1.6 to two pesos a piece. Yes. In total, you're looking to raise up to 1.58 billion pesos right. uh, to sell 930 million common shares and looking to do so by the first half of 2017. I want yes. to know why go public and what is the money for? Okay. Uh, well, Pure Energy is, is, is actually focused on uh, mini hydros. Uh, we are focused also on, on, on bulk water services uh, outside Metro Manila and uh, the geothermal uh, energy as well. Uh, the IPO will be funding our equity portion for the projects that we're currently undertaking with, different, with the different partners that we have. Uh, number two, it's going to be funding also our development projects, uh, mostly situated in Mindanao. And uh, thirdly, it's basically for, for, for basically for capital and operating expenditures as well of the company. And in fact, one of the partners uh, you mentioned is uh, Meralco, with which you have existing hydropower uh, plant agreements, is that yes, correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay, and is there a target in your mind as far as the number of projects is concerned? Right now, we have a total of nine projects with, with Meralco. We, uh, we just broke ground and financially closed last December in Bukidnon for 10.6 megawatts. That's the Pulanai project, uh, and construction is about to begin. Uh, later this month, we are again groundbreaking for another project in Quezon. This is the Lalawinan project. Uh, and this is a three megawatt project as well. So we're moving, uh, given that the partnership started back in March, we're moving quite aggressively on the, uh, on the timeline to, and in to complete fact, them. You have a um, midterm goal of working your way up to 500 megawatts across right. your entire portfolio. Right now you're at about what, 153 or so megawatts? Yes. Uh, most of that growth, as you've already said, will come from hydropower projects. And I want to know why this focus on hydro. I mean, in the places that you're located, the pure energy is located, right. there's also solar, there's also geothermal. Why hydro? That's correct. Um, hydro, compared to the other renewable sources, has its advantages. Number one, in terms of lifespan. Uh, the, we, we own today uh, Philpodeco. It's a, uh, it's a, basically, it's, it's, it's a combination of three plants in Laguna, and it's a, we're celebrating the 90th birthday of, of that plant, built by the Americans, and uh, we are in the process of rehabilitating that facility to double the, uh, the capacity. That should go online, uh, at least for the first plant, by the first quarter of this year. So the lifespan is, 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 uh, uh, is an advantage. Number two, the operation and maintenance costs. It's much less to operate a mini hydro compared to solar and to, and to the other renewable sources. Uh, number three, uh, it's a 24-7 operation. Uh, we, we've done, we've, we've mapped out our, our hydrology properly on all the locations. We are in, in, in water rich uh, provinces like, uh, like Laguna, Quezon, and, uh, Bukid, and uh, Bukidnon. Coming back to your point about uh, costs, uh, operational costs for producing solar energy have also come down drastically in the That's last right. few years. That's right. So why not, uh, you know, equal measure solar and hydro? Right. Okay. Um, in terms of capacity factors that these plants can generate, uh, solar is limited, as you know. You need the, the power of the of sun course. to do it. So you need about three to four hours a day. With hydro, so long as there's water flowing from the river, your, your energy is continuous. There are certain limits in the capacity, but it's still higher compared to the other renewable sources. Precisely. So it comes down to the dependability, we Correct. can say. Yes. So precisely because there's a mandate to move towards more uh, cleaner energy and because the Philippines is getting closer to fully ratifying the Paris Climate Change Pact, yes. invariably that will bring in a lot more competition into the sector. In fact, we, just this week we have San Miguel uh, saying that it's working with two other Asian firms, possibly in a renewable energy venture. Right. How are you placed for competition? 
Well, we are, as, as we said, we are moving very aggressively with the uh, service contracts that we're working on on the mini hydro side. Uh, we have very credible partners with us, uh, not only Miralco, we also have the Frabel Group uh, that is currently under, we're, we're currently undertaking and, and about to, uh, you know, under construction for a project as well. Uh, we are looking for opportunities. Uh, going beyond the 153 megawatts that we have in the pipeline today. And those opportunities are coupled by, by entering into joint venture with other uh, credible partners. You're also looking to tap into the government's feed-in tariff program. What sort of price point are we yes. looking at? Uh, well, the feed-in tariff for, for hydro is 590 per kilowatt. And uh, at this point, the current take, at least uh, what the FIT has been awarded to uh, amounts to about 26 megawatts. Uh, the government allocated 250 megawatts, and we are confident that we will hit our targets. Which would be? Uh, which, well, which would be, uh, well, again, the pipeline right now is about 125. Mm. Uh, we're confident we're going to hit that target and, and hopefully get the, uh, the feed-in tariff. So 125. Uh, any yeah. concerns at all about President Duterte's comments about uh, wanting to open up the energy sector? I think competition is good. Um, we see a lot of foreign players in the market. Um, and I think that that will bring up uh, the quality. I mean, it will raise the standard and the quality of players that is now investing in the market. So bringing in the, you know, the, the players in the market would be very good for, for energy renewable energy for that. Very fair points. An IPO within the first half of 2017. We're confident yes. we can push it out within the first half of the year? Uh, very confident. All right. We're going to have to leave it there. Gary Espino, President of Pure Energy, we appreciate your time this morning. Thank you.